This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. Authorization is a very important part of our applications that we build. And this is different from authentication, where authentication is who has access to our application, and authorization is what do they have access to. Back in episode 47, we explored using Pundit as a authorization mechanism, and I really do like Pundit. I think that it is a great gem, and it does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. However, it is really centric around the controller and actions. And so then in episode 247, we looked at a dynamic role management where we did authorization on an attribute level. And essentially, we were able to lock down the application so only certain attributes could be edited by users. And so in this episode, I want to extend the idea of authorization in our applications, but not focus on the attribute level or the controller action levels, but a just more broader sense around our application. And I was looking into the Rollify gem, and I've used it in the past, and it is a really good gem. However, I do think that it is pretty heavy lifting in a lot of cases, and if our application is simple enough, then we may not need to bring this in, especially if the different type of actors within our application is fairly simple. So instead, we're going to have a look at creating our own authorization workflow, starting at the very basic, and then moving to more complicated scenarios. And so I'm starting off with a fresh Rail 7 application with device installed, and it's a very basic device installation where we have a user model, and this user model can sign in or sign up. And so on our model for our users, I'm going to generate a migration where we're going to add a role to the users. And this is going to be an integer. And before we run the migration, I'm just going to add a default, and we'll set it to zero. And we'll add a limit one on this because we don't need it to be a large column because we're just going to use it as an enum. So then in the user model, we could do something like an enum for the role. We'll make it a hash. And then we can have something like a normal user. We'll set this to zero. And that means because our user role has a default of zero, then a new user who gets created would be a normal user. And then we can make a user an admin. And maybe we'll set that to one. Then in our application, we could do something like a if current underscore user is an admin. However, you would then want to make sure that in the controllers, you're not allowing the role to be editable by a normal user. So typically in a controller for a user, you would have a user params. You would then take in the params. You would require the user. And then you would permit whatever variables like the email, the name, and so forth. And again, this is in the user controller, usually in a private method. However, I'm just putting it in the user model because we are going to explore other role approaches. And so I'm just going to leave this commented out. And so if you had an admin, then you would need to add the role in here so that a admin user would be able to make changes to a user's role. However, that would then allow a normal user to upgrade their access to an admin and you wouldn't want that. So instead, what I typically do in this cases is that I would have some kind of allowed attributes. And with those allowed attributes, if a user is signed in, and if that current user is an admin, then for the allowed attributes, we can inject in the role. We can then permit this array of symbols, and that would work. So you do want to take caution by using roles that you're not opening up and allowing someone to make modifications to this attribute if they don't have access to. And so for now, I'm going to just go ahead and comment out the roles that we've added to the user because we are going to take a different approach. So instead, we're still going to have a roles model and we're just going to have a name one here just so we get some kind of reference to it. We're also going to have another string called reference and this will be a class name. So like a user, a post, a comment. 
and then we'll specify an access level to it. We'll then have a joining table for the user roles, and this is where we'll have a user reference as well as a role reference. And so the idea here is that we can set for a role for a user to be an admin, but perhaps there's another level of access that we want to add to users for something like posts where we can allow users to create posts, but then we may want to have some kind of editor that we would want the editor to be able to edit posts but not create new ones. In the same way for something like comments, maybe we would want to have users to be able to create and edit comments, but then we may have a mechanism where if a user has abused their privileges, then we would only want them to be able to view the comments, but not make any additional ones or make any edits. And so something like that could be rather difficult to do with a single level of roles that we had with the user. And then we would need to introduce some more complex systems. And the Rollify gem could be a good fit here. However, I do think that taking a manual approach or doing this from scratch gives us a better understanding on how we are approaching authorization. So in our terminal, we'll go ahead and generate a model for the roles with a name, a reference, and then we'll have our access, which is an integer. So we can limit this field to a single number and we'll have a default of zero. We'll then generate another model for the user roles and that'll belong to the user, and it also belongs to the role. And once we do that, we can go ahead and migrate our database. So in our seeds.rb file, I'm just going to create a few different users. We'll have a user.create, and the email we'll use is admin at example.com. We'll give it a password, and because we are using device, we also have to set the password confirmation, which again, we'll set to one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll create another user, and we'll just make this user an editor, and then we'll make a guest user. And so with these users, by default, none of them have any kind of role, and we don't have any roles created, so we need to create some of these first. So we'll have a role.create, and the name we'll just maybe say an admin user. The reference, if you remember, is just a string that we're going to use, and the way we're structuring it is that this would be some kind of class that we have set up within our application. And also, we have an access attribute, so we do need to create an enum in the role. So we'll switch over to that. And so the enum for the access attribute, we'll just have a createable, we'll set this to one. We'll have an editable, we'll set that to two. And maybe you could do something like a no access, we'll set it to three. And we could set, because we do have a default, we can set a viewable to zero, so by default, any role that's created, if we don't specify the access, it would just be viewable. So for the admin user, we would want to make this creatable. And let's say we're also going to create some posts in our application, so we can create another admin for the posts, and then we'll also create an editor for the post, but we would not want a user who has this editor post to be able to create new ones. Instead, we would want them to just edit them, so we would make it editable. And I'll set these to some local variables, so we can then take our admin user, we can set the user roles, and we'll create a new record with the role of admin user role. We could also make this a post admin by creating another user role with the admin post role, and the editor will have a user roles. We'll create this user role with the editor post role. And so now an admin user should be able to create or edit other users they should be able to create and edit other posts. The editor would not have access to edit any kind of user or create other users, and they would not be able to create posts, but they would be able to edit them. So we do have to set up the relationships. So a user has many user roles, and we'll make it a dependent and destroy. So if the user is deleted, then their user role or access is deleted as well. And we could also say that a user has many roles through the user roles. And that's all the relationship we have to do on the user. On the user role, we already have the relationship set up because of the migration. And for the role, we need to set the has many user roles. And again, we'll add a dependent and destroy on here. So this way, if a role is deleted, any of the users who had access to that role is also removed from that access list as well. So for the user, I want to create some kind of interface or method that we can use to then check the access of things. So we can do something like a 
can edit, and then we'll pass in some kind of resource. And the resource that we're going to pass in, it could just be a post or a user, or it could be a user record. Either way, I want to take into consideration both of these because we might have a situation where on the index action of our post, we maybe want to hide the new post button or something like that. And we wouldn't have a record associated with it yet at that point. We would also want a similar method for the can create. And so one of the things with Ruby is if I do a user.class, that's going to result in a class string. But if I do a user.first and class, that's going to result in a user. So we do need to check if the resource.class will make sure that it's a string is equal to class, that we need to get this actual model. And we can do that with a user.name, and that would result in user. So we can get the resource.name. Otherwise, if it doesn't equal to class, then we can get the resource.class and again, we'll just make sure it's a string. We can set this to a local variable. I'm just going to call it the resource class. And then we can find the role. So because we're in the user model and because we have the relationship set up that a user has many roles through the user roles, we can set our role is equal to the roles dot find by. And remember, the roles have a reference, whether it could be a user or a post. So we can find it by the resource class. And if no role is found, then we can return false unless there is a role. Otherwise, we can check if the role is editable or if the role is createable. And these checks are going to reference back to the role, whether it's viewable, creatable, editable, or no access. But there is one problem here. If a user has been given viewable access to a post, but then later they're also given access to edit the post, then the find by is only going to return the first result. We could do a where on here, and then we could just map through those roles, and then check if any of those are true. We could do the same thing for the creatable. And so that way we're taking into account if the user has multiple roles, and that should work. And we could actually copy this and do the same thing for the can create, except we just would need to check the creatable role. And so I've also created a scaffold for our post. So we can create a post with a post.create. And I'll just create a title on here. And let's also grab the first user. That should be our admin user. And so we can then do something like a user that can edit and we can reference the post. And this returns true. We do a lookup on the role and we'll see that the admin user has access to edit it. We can check if the user can create a post and I'm just going to pass in that record again. But let's say if we want to check if the user can create a post, and we'll just reference the model name. And that again returns true. So let's switch to the second user. And this user is the editor. So we can check if the user can create. We'll check to see if they can create the post. It returns false. We then check if they can edit the post. And then we can also pass in the variable post, which is our first post. But if we check if they can edit it, then that would return true. If we switch to our last user, which is a guest, we can check if the user can edit the post, and they can't. And so if we go to the index view for our post, on the link to edit the post, we can do a check if the user is signed in, and we can also check if the current user, if they can edit the post. And so I wouldn't want to have to check if a user is signed in, and then also check if the user can edit the post every single time. Instead, I would probably do something like a safe operator, where if user is nil, then it won't check this, but if the current user is not nil, then it'll check the can edit. But even more ideally, I think I would just like to have a if can edit the post. And we can make a helper for can edit, and then we'll pass in some kind of resource. We can add a guard clause, return false, unless the user is signed in. And if the user is signed in, then we can check the current user, if they can edit, and then the resource. And we can do the same thing for the can create. And so the reason why I like this is that it's very extendable that we could have a can view or any other kind of logic that we need. And because we built this from scratch, we understand what kind of authorization is going on. There's really no guesswork, 
and I think that this would be fairly maintainable. Now, as the application gets more and more complicated, maybe you have a situation where the role over an entire type of resource, whether it's a user or post, isn't good enough, you need more granular details. Maybe you had a situation where only a specific user can manage and edit a list of specific users, something like a manager to an employee relationship, then you may need to reach for something like Rollify. As then, at that point, you would be using a lot of what Rollify is doing and the features that they offer. However, if you don't need that, if your authorization needs are a bit more simple, then rolling it from scratch like this may be preferable. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.